the amount of battery life that my camera has lost because I've tried to film this intro for the past, hmm, let's see, 15 to 20 minutes is almost embarrassing. But anyway, I'm sitting down here trying to get through the video, trying to make a good educational video that hopefully you guys can learn something about diabetes and fat loss. And if you know me, I hate public speaking and I don't know if this is considered public speaking because obviously it's sitting through a camera, but I'm trying to get myself comfortable with the idea of speaking in front of a camera and not babbling because I babble so much when I'm nervous, but um, that's not gonna happen today. And it's not gonna happen today because I wrote all of my points here that I'm gonna cover. So hopefully with writing them down and reading them, I will not babble and I will not bore you. But the reason why I wanted to make this video is because on my TikTok and Instagram, I don't know if you guys follow me, but if you do, you would have probably seen, I have a lot of comments and DMs asking me, how do I control my weight being a type one diabetic? And I have to be honest with you, it's something that is really not easy and something that I really struggle with myself every single day. Now, I've struggled with my weight since the age of nine. And no, there was nothing wrong with my weight. It's just that I had body dysmorphia as unfortunately many, many young girls do growing up in the kind of like society that we have built around us today. So since I was nine years old, I was very conscious about what I ate and also being type one diabetic, I had to calorie count and carb count because that's how I worked out the ratio for my units and how many units I needed to take for whatever I ate. So from nine years old, I had to pay attention to food and nutrition and I knew exactly what I was eating, how many calories a chocolate bar had or a pack of crisps or chicken or beef or like I had had to know all of that I was basically a walking nutrition dictionary if that even exists I don't know and then moving on from being nine years old to then growing up into a teenager I did struggle more with my weight and again there was nothing wrong with my weight I just really didn't like how I looked and just like many people do women as well women and men I fluctuated in weight and if I can find a picture of myself I'll put one here and how I look now. So the reason why I wanted to do this video today really is because I know how incredibly hard it is to one, maintain weight and lose weight with diabetes. And I actually have had some comments saying people like finding it difficult to put weight on, but that's a different topic. Anyway, so without any further ado from me, see this mummy, the babbling, the babbling. We're not doing the babbling today. Anyway, so first tip is very obvious and I'm sure you guys hear this all the time, but it's exercise and being more active. Now, since I was about 15 years old, even though I was not allowed in the gym, since I was 15, I've actually been going to the gym and training. I first started with cardio training, then HIIT training, and uh, then it went to weightlifting. And I kind of did a lot of different types of exercise in gym and just fitness related stuff. So what I mean by that is you have to get your body moving. Exercise is not just from a fat loss perspective, but it's also extremely important for your physical and mental health. And it could be as simple as going for a walk every single day. I mean, I I do 10,000 steps every single day and that's come rain, shine, snow, whatever it is, I make sure that I get 10,000 steps a day and it really helps with maintaining my weight and my mental state. Next point I wrote under fitness is doing 30 to 60 minutes at the gym three to four times a week. Now, I understand everyone has different working lives, some people have you know, families, work really late or are just not able to get to the gym. So if you're not able to get down to the gym, work out at home, work out outside, go outside for a run. All I'm saying is that you need to also exercise. So on top of your 10,000 steps a day, make sure that you also get to the gym or exercise at least three to four times a week. And I know you're already watching this video and thinking, bloody hell, this is already so much so excessive. But the reason why these methods have worked for me and a lot of my diabetic friends is because when you have type one diabetes, it's so hard to lose weight or maintain your weight. So we have to work extra hard to look after ourselves and be healthy. And sadly, that's just the reality of things, you know? 